So, I am in the game, in the bottom right corner we have our reigning champion of this improved Im improv king of the hill tournament with no prize pool Kalevi and in the top right corner playing on circuit breaker we have our protoss player expand there's been a lot of uh, TVP here but we'll be fine with that so I'm getting a little bit tired so if I start to slip out and just talk about weird stuff or not pay attention to things you know why but I'll try and focus and be as mindful as possible. We see Kalev is APM at a whooping zero. But I guess he is alt tabbing and doing something. APM of expander is spamming like crazy. Yes, I agree. Map knowledge in this game is important. Circuit Breaker was a very good um, map in Brood War. It's actually statistically the most balanced Brood War map ever made. I had to look at it. It's known for its being very, very balanced. But this version is a little bit different. Uh, Circuit Breaker. Uh, are you streaming of that King of the Hill? Which one? Hang on just a second. Uh, I'm not, I'm just making my own King of the Hill here, just randomly. Not quite sure what he means about that. That king of the hill. I don't. I don't know if there's a king of the hill going on right now that uh, I should be streaming. Anyhow, so uh, pretty standard for both expanders. Should probably be getting a gas soon. And once he has 100 minerals, 14 workers. Um, let me just uh, talk to him. Okay, I'm, I don't think I have... Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not gonna... But Ladder, if you're watching the stream, see this, you just watch the stream. Um, we had a goal of getting the Ladder out today. We have failed that goal. Um, we are not gonna get the Ladder out today. Oh, I love you, Kalevi. You're gonna go Bio versus Protoss with the Ghost Academy. Okay, I'll try to focus for... Uh, but we are gonna try and have a Ladder up by the beginning of next week. Probably Monday. Oh, we have a Reaper out with a kill. Sorry, I was just typing to this guy, so I haven't been paying attention. Um, so Reaper is out, Robotics Facility is on the way, he's going very Brood War style versus Terran, which is um, only normal since he's been playing a lot of Brood War. He has no idea what's waiting him though. I, <laughs> Kalevi is being kind of a, I'm not going to say he's a douche, but going a style versus Protoss that you couldn't do in Brood War versus a guy who's played mostly Brood War. He's not going to get it. No, I don't think he can get a nuke, no, he needs a factory first. But he can. You have to upgrade the shock ability. I don't think you have to. I think all the. I think ghosts start with both clo cloak and shock. Yeah. No cloak needs to be researched, but not the shock ability. I like that. Ghosts are actually quite strong. Look at the stats. They have tw twelve damage, with a weapon speed of one point six. That's quite fast, and they move on two point seventy five. In comparison, medics move on two point. They're much faster than the medics. Uh, ghosts are really good, and he's churning out just pure ghosts. This is crazy. This is a really, really crazy build. I love you, Kalevi. This is awesome. And we have a patrolling dragoon here. I really feel. How much has he seen? He's seen. He saw the two barracks. I'm really questioning the way he's playing this out. Like, dragoons can kite marines. So you really want to just have them sit over here and just delay the push for as long as possible. And he knows that from Brood War. And here comes a lot of really, really fast ghosts. And they're going to meet this friendly Dragoon. They're just going to kill him. Look at that. They do so much DPS. And here's the shock slowing the Dragoon down and just killing him. He has no idea how to deal with this because this has never happened to him before. 
is churning out dragoons. They soon have the singularity charge. These are so fast, and they spawn in this position where the ghosts come up first. He wants to attack with these guys and not. Ooh, shocks the workers. I don't know why, but kills things so fast. Ghost might be OP, like seriously, it just might, but we, we made them quite strong because we want people to try them out, and people haven't been trying them. Oh, and here comes another shock, but he misses it, it has a projectile, it can be dodged. Oh, that shock really hits home. This is so weird to watch, I don't even know how to commentate this because I've never seen it before. Like, I don't even know if this, what this game is because this is not like Starboy I usually see, and wow, he's just gonna kill these Dragoons. He has to do a lot of damage though because he hasn't expanded, he's committed a lot of resources to this ghost. So even though Expanded is losing a lot of units and stuff here, like ghosts actually have to do a lot of damage. And I don't know if they paid for themselves here. And he doesn't really have any way to defend against this. The bunker with four ghosts though is gonna go a long ways, and he's gonna get Marauders with both stim and range, um, which are very important versus especially the range is very important versus dragoons. So let's have a look at the workers killed. Twelve workers were killed there. They have the same amount of workers though, and he has a base. So I don't I wouldn't say that was successful, but I would say it was awesome. And they did spawn in the positions where they're closest to each other on Circuit Breaker, which is quite a close position. I like the stim. He needs to try and target okay, there we go. Get some marauders out. Expanders probably all weirded out by this. Like, why is he going by? Why is he making marauders and ghosts? Like, this is not brood war. And no, it is not brood war. I can tell you that much. This is as far away from brood war as we can get in this game. It's usually... TVP is usually a very brood war-esque, but this has been very different. He's finally expanding. He's getting the range. He should be fine. Range marauders in the bunker does... I don't think the range dragoon can outrange that. That was a lot of range. Okay, so this is six. This is four. But it's going to be 5 with range, and it's going to be plus 1 with bunkers, so it's going to be 6, yes. Yeah, so it's going to have the same range. So that should be good. A lot of little addition there. Double forge. I guess he can. He shouldn't be really too afraid of any pushes anytime soon. He can kite marauders quite well with dragoons. I don't know if he knows that, though, because marauders are actually quite strong versus stalkers in Starcraft 2, but they're not as good versus dragoons in, in Starbow just because of range. We have considered giving them a plus 2 for a range upgrade in range for Marauders, so they have the same range as Dragoons, so they can't kite so much, but... Because Zealous are still really strong versus Marauders there. And Storm and a lot of other stuff, so... We'll see though. Hyder really wants the Marauder to have plus 2 range when they're upgraded, I know that. So you have a, a very slow... Compare that to the Ghost, man. The Ghosts have almost, you know, 100% more... Okay, that was... No, they don't. That was... 50% more, that's more correct, uh, movement speed than these Marauders do. So he sees his army, this army is being very, like, you kind of want to be out here and try to go for his round or something, and this is very choky, and this might actually turn into Kalevi's, uh, he's a favorite, he sees that with the Observer, he could, like, one scout could actually decimate this, so he needs to get the, the Zealots in the front, he really needs Zealot speed, and he's working it, oh, and he turns around, not really sure if he wants to engage or not, they do not have concussive shells, so they cannot, like, catch units, the only... The only uh, unit that you can catch all the units with is the shark spell of the ghost, which you saw a great display of earlier in this game. No anti-air whatsoever. Like, one scout could actually do a number on, on Terran now, but of course making a couple of marines is really easy. Oh, and even ghosts can just take down a scout quite easily, I think. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy build from Kalevi. Sorry, just had to see the chat there for a second, see your reaction to that ghost opening because that was epic. Uh, I don't, I've never seen that before. And like, he, he almost made it work, which is incredible. I think he's done it a couple of times before though because that looked very like well planned out and executed. That did not look like, oh, let's just make some ghosts. Uh, but maybe it was just like that. Look at that, it's so pretty. Morelli, you're so awesome. I, I'm kind of envious because I made this map actually, like not not this version, I made Circuit Breaker and then Morel just took my Circuit Breaker and said it's bad and I'm going to make a Circuit Breaker and he did and he just showed me how bad my map was. <laughs> That's okay, we made an awesome map. Oh, there we go, all the shock. Man, bring those ghosts, this is this is a much better use of the ghosts I feel. Now these, now these, it's kind of preventing the dragoons from kind of, but he, oh, he gets his own fire ban in the shock, and you need firebats versus these zealots. 
Shark has a slow projectile, and that's their downfall. They, they can be, you know, counter record. Okay, three Archons. That's gonna put an end to this, but he might get the Nexus first. Nope. He keeps the Bioplay going, though. I like that. And there's been no Reavers, no High Templars yet, except for the ones needed to make these Archons. And the Archons not really getting up front. Okay, there the Archons get up close, and the Archons do so much damage. He gets one Archon. That's really good. He's gonna lose his Bio, though. There's no way he's gonna be able to hold this Force alive, but... Man, Kalev is getting money, it's getting high. It's so hard to macro effectively with bio. Like, if someone could, if like a macro beast could play bio and like be a micro and macro beast, like I, f I seriously feel I feel bio has a lot of potential in TVP, but it requires so much APM and so much micro and positioning and well, like it's like the flash bit. Like it's only flash that can execute it. I feel he needs to get a couple in the bunker here. Try and get some shocks off probably. A lot of range damage there, but ooh, want to be careful. Don't want to go too close to these units again. Nice shocks coming out. Ooh, really good shocks. I'm going to follow up with more shocks, but he needs to get into the bunker. He really needs to kite back. And there's just too many forces from, from Protoss. Protoss is so strong versus Bioplay. All the units so strong, so difficult to defend. It's so awesome to see Bioplay, though. Like, it just... And... I dislike the fact that we try to make Bio awesome with abilities and not by just having a really strong Marauder. Because a really strong Marauder would have probably balanced this better, but it would have been so boring. Just a moving still Marauders is just the most boring thing in the world. Having to use the shock spell, having to use the, the Matrix from the Medic, I would have loved to see more of that. Ooh, there we go, a lot of shock going off. And he's going to slow down the Archon, which is very crucial. Gonna sh when you slow down units, you got to back them off, though. More marines coming in, but here comes all the zealots, and ooh, even more marines though. If, if he can shock off the ramp, he could be fine. No, he's gonna actually DPS down this army. Crazy. Wow, Kalevi holds. I would never imagine he'd be able to hold this, but you know, in the meantime, Expander can, you know, do exactly what his nicknames tells him to do. He can expand, take another base. Kalevi's stuck on two bases. This is kind of the opposite of what it should be, you know, when you buy your more mobiles and you need more income than when you're mech, so you should be the one taking more bases and actually trying to keep up a little bit more with the Protoss expanding than you can do when you have mech games, so, yeah, Kalev is in a really bad spot right now, his supply is surprisingly close to Expander, but I guess he has been expanding a lot, and that might be why, ooh, the gateway transition, I mean, the warp gate transition, he needs to add a ton of gateways to the warp gates because the cooldown takes forever. Where will he warp in? He's warping in stuff. He's warping in a ton of High Templars and Zealots. He's not going to get any more Dragoons anytime soon because he cannot warp those in. And he's probably discovering that right now. And uh, he cannot also warp in... They're not... Okay, he's... Re that, one's re that one's not researching. He's just being chrono boosted. Sorry. Here we go. All the Firebats trying to kill the Zealots. If he can shock the Zealots and then attack with the Firebats... Ooh, but the Storm. Storm just chewing up Bio so hard to make this work without adding in vultures. Wow, that was a slaughter. Yeah, that's GD, I think. Like, he can probably hold this with mass repairs, but he's gonna be put in a state that's just pretty much unbearable, I think. There's a fire bat in the bunker. Look at the fire coming out of that bunker. Oh, this looks so awesome. Archon's doing so much damage, man. It take forever to die, and he's actually gonna lose the bunker too. Yeah, this is GD. But... Props to Kalevi for trying this. Very risky play. It actually kind of, in my mind, it worked. I know it didn't work, but it's just, it it should work. I think if we if we would have macro better and try to take a base while he was attacking over there, it might have worked. But it still sucks. Thanks for doing it, though, Kalevi. We love you for that. So expanders on King of the Hill now. I think I have time for one more game. Let's see who can beat expander.